When I was invited to do this talk, there were two voices that simultaneously started erupting inside of me. One of them said, yes, this is so exciting. And then there was this other one that popped up and said, holy crap, now what? And it's a uniquely human experience. Any time an exciting opportunity is presented, I think, to any of us, there are those two parts that are vying for our attention. Now, as a psychodramatist, I know that that dynamic is about the relationship between anxiety and spontaneity. The founder of psychodrama, J.L. Moreno, believed that those two things are inversely related. The more anxious I am, the less spontaneous I can be. But if I can lower my anxiety and my spontaneity can rise, well, there's no limit to where I can go. So rather than telling you more about this through the magic of psychodrama, today we are going to show you. So psychodrama is based on a triadic system. And the three parts are warm-up, action, and sharing. Now, due to the time constraints we have today, you're only going to see the action portion of this. We have done a warm-up together backstage, and we will do our sharing portion together backstage as well. So, Tony has very bravely volunteered to be our protagonist today. And what I want you to know also is that these people are not actors. They're absolutely magnificent students that I have the pleasure of working with. But everything that you will see done here is done spontaneously and in an unscripted way. So when we think about exploring that issue of anxiety versus spontaneity, we're going to start with Tony in this center chair. So have a seat. And just take a moment, and if you could name for us what this internal dilemma is that you might be struggling with right now. Well, um, about a year ago, I found out uh, what I need to do uh, to be a uh, more fulfilled uh, attorney. Mm -hmm. um, but the process of, the journey of going there is very difficult. In fact, it's very scary. For very me. scary to let go of that security. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the dilemma is whether, you know, to choose between being a, Happier attorney, maybe uh, make a little bit less uh, money, mm -hmm. or make more money and be a miserable attorney. Right. There you go. <laughs> How many men in our culture struggle with this dilemma, especially when there's a family involved that they have to support? So one at a time, I'm going to invite you to take each of these chairs, and we're going to hear these two inner voices. And the rest of the group that we have here will be eventually taking on roles. They might also do something that we call doubling. And I'm going to demonstrate doubling. A double is somebody who gets you so well that they could speak for you. And classically in psychodrama, when I double, I step in behind the protagonist and I make a statement as though I am him. And he can correct it, or he can repeat it, or he can embroider upon it. So I'm going to double, and we'll see if this fits. What in God's name was I thinking, putting myself out to do a piece of work in front of all these people here today? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, very scary. Yeah, glad the, glad the lights are bright so I don't really have to see any of the faces either. This is good. That's okay. Right. Okay, great. So that's what doubling is. So one at a time, I'm going to invite you to take on each of these roles. Okay. So you choose which one you want to sit in first, and we'll hear from these two inner voices. What role is this? You sit and you tell us. OK. Um, this role is uh, um, when I found the purpose uh, of my life, so to speak. OK. Um, so have a seat, and let's, speak, let's have you speak from this role, and we'll hear <laughs> this part of you. Well, um, finally, I found a way to fulfill myself. Uh, in my chosen career, you know, um, I work at myself and I figure out what's my value, what are important in my life. Uh, I figure out um, the clients that I need to attract um, to fulfill those, uh, um, to make me fu be fulfilled. Yeah, and if you can just take a moment and tune in and just name what the value is that I found. 
Well, um, I love helping people. I love helping people. Yeah. And I want to work with clients that, um, that has need uh, or need help. Yes. Um, you know, in legal profession, um, sometimes clients, um, they came to me because they want to take advantage of the law. And nothing wrong with that. But, um, you know, it, it just, they had to ask different attorney to help them out. Yeah. Because um, that is no longer in line with yeah. my value. Yeah. That's no longer my value. Yeah. yeah. So if I, if I move, yes, please. <laughs> so I'm going to invite you just to make a statement about what it feels like to sit in this chair and be tuned into my value and create a work life to represent that. Yeah. It's wonderful. Because I know um, if I'm in this place, I can wake up early, go to work early, and happily stay late uh, every single work day. Fabulous. And um, that's what motivates me to work hard, to work long hours, and I'm happy to do it. Yeah. So just take a moment and let that land inside of you. And Tony, I'm going to invite you to choose somebody to take this role for you. Who in the group can take the role? Um, I'll choose Michael. Michael, come have a seat. You go back to the middle chair, please, Tony. And we're just going to hear that. So Michael's now taking on this role that Tony represented as a part of him. When I get to help people, when I, when I get to do something to make a difference in people's lives, that's when I feel really fulfilled. That's where my value is. And... I'm willing to start early and work late. I don't care because it fills my heart. That's really where I want to be. So you got it, Tony? Yeah. Okay. Let's have you take on the other chair. Let's hear the other voice. Well, um, yeah, he can talk about his value all he wants, but the reality, <laughs> I mean, the reality is I have family to feed, you know. Um, towards the end of the day, I got to put food on the table. Um, I have two children I need to support. Um, and, you know, I, I need to uh, sustain the lifestyles that, um, you know, my family um, is going through right now. So if I'm walking towards that direction, man, Scary. I, mean, I, have, I might lose some money. Might I might lose do. some clients. Well, first thing I need to do is to turn away the clients that are going to pay me for doing things that they want to do. Yeah, if I stop taking those clients that pay me that way, then I'm going to lose money. And if I do, um, you know, I'm kind of afraid that what ki my kids going to say is like, yeah, what happened? How come we cannot go this place, go, go that place, go right. have this kind of thing, go that kind of thing? Okay. Yeah. All right, choose somebody to take on this role. Thank you. Great. Go back to the center chair, please. And we're going to hear from this voice. Well, that's great. Yeah, values. That's, that's really great. That'll feed the family. You know, what are you thinking? That's a pretty selfish act on your part. You know, um, what, you, know you, you can't just give up what you've been doing and, you know, you've got a family to feed. And what are the kids going to think? What are they going to tell their friends? You know? You got that role, Tony? Yeah. Yeah. So now we're going to hear both of them at the same time. What we call maximization in psychodrama. Let's hear from both of them at the same time. So what it you, so what feeds my heart to do that work. I just work. can't believe that I you would even imagine to do this. To just this is such a selfish act on your part. That experience the joy you know, you've got a family to raise and to think about. This isn't about people. you. I love Reese. That. What's going on, Tony? Got a lot of doubles in the audience. <laughs> um, I'm not, I wasn't able to move. I'm frozen. To the, yeah, I'm frozen. I wasn't able to move to the direction I want to go. Something is holding me back yeah. because of the concern that I have. Right. Yeah. Um, so I want you to choose somebody to sit in for you in that spot. Christina, Christina come on out here with me. It's what we call the mirror position. You're going to get a reflection of what's going on here. 
and we're just going to kick this back into gear, and we're going to watch from out here. Okay? So let's just let it rip again. That work what of helping you people, thinking? it feeds my heart. Well, and what about your it's reputation? It's what I'm drawn to do. I'm you know, called to that. There's things that I want you my have to provide to for this family. I can't believe that, that you would be so selfish. I want so my children selfish. to know you what know, it is to live by values, not You've got to think about what's right for this family. Please. So what do you notice from out here? You might want to take a breath. That might I can, help. I can, <laughs> I can listen to her. Can't listen to her. Yeah. Because if I do... I will never able to move back, yeah. move towards the direction I want to go. So what do you want to do with that part of yourself? You can do anything you want. You're a psychodrama. Um, well. <laughs> I'm going to cover her up. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I kind of think I need two or three of them. <laughs> So I don't see her face. Um, I'm hearing some gagging and and uh, gagging uh, opportunities offered from the audience here. Yeah. 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 So what do you want to say to that part of yourself now that you've covered it up? Well, you know, um, thanks for re you know for reminding me that I need to support my family, and I'm going to do that. Yeah. But at the same time. Um, I believe that if I'm more, if I'm a more fulfilled father, more fulfilled person, I can serve my family better. Say that again. If I'm a more fulfilled person, I can serve my family better, better than what it's now. So the last thing I'm going to ask you to do is how you want to close this piece. What do you want to say? What do you want to do? You can reconfigure it. You can do anything you want. Um, well, I kind of have to move her. Going to move her? Yeah, I'm going to move her. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know he's, that kind of voice is gonna, always going to exist. Yeah, you're always going to exist for me. Yeah, but I have to make a decision to put you somewhere in the back. So that uh, your voice is not right. as strong, not as obvious. Yeah, you're not going to go away. I know that. But I can Back choose life, where I, yeah. yeah, it's a fact of life. Exactly. Fact of life. And what do you want to do with these two other parts? Well, I kind of want to um, stay here and to uh, soak up with the energy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That um, this part of me, that um, the kind of person that I will be, um, Frankly, I just can't wait to to be over here. Yeah. Can't wait. So is this a place we can stop yes. today? Great. So I'm going to have you all stand up and de-roll, because we don't want Diane walking around the rest of the <laughs> conference and having everybody avoiding her and wanting to strangle her. So let's have you all stand up and de-roll. So I'm one Michael, at a time. I'm not your good angel. I'm Say that again. I'm not Tony. Say it again. I'm Christina. I'm not Tony. Thank you. I'm Michael. I'm not your good angel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Diane. I'm not, I'm not that negative voice. Let's give them another round of applause. Give it up. <laughs> you can stand over here for now. Did I tell you they were fabulous? I'm very blessed. So Tony said it so eloquently. That voice is going to come up for each and every one of us when an, an opportunity arises or when a vision manifests. But the question is, can I bring those parts of myself together? Can I step into my spontaneity with a lot of support from other people and choose to give compassion to myself instead of having contempt for the choices that I might have made and instead of living in the fear that might get in the way of who knows where my spontaneity might be? Thank you. Come on out.